Hey everybody, Jonathan Mark Mendes, Painted Love, and welcome to my channel. Today I'm taking another revisited look at one of my old Academy tutorials, and this one is how to take fabric upholstery and turn it into vintage looking leather. Yep, the chair behind me is a fabric chair and it's all completely painted. Now, many of you may have seen this project and remember it very well. It was from my painter in residence um, stint with Annie Sloan in 2017. And back then we didn't share how this happened other than in text. And if you're like me, you're a visual learner and you might want to see the process step by step. So I redid this process for the Painted Love Academy and I'm now sharing that with you here and now with a few added extras along the way because slightly, I've done this a few times since and I've slightly changed my method and there's other paints that people might be using that I would like to advise along the way as well. So let's take a closer look at the actual chair that I did in 2017 and then we'll move into the actual tutorial. So here is the original project that I did for Annie Sloan in 2017. The actual chair was covered in a shot silk, which is a very fine upholstery, um, perfect for this kind of treatment. I don't have too many pictures of the original upholstery other than one that you can have a look in the next frame. Let's dive into today's project and you will see in the video I'm leaning on a Victorian chair and the upholstery looks in fairly good nick. Now it looks good because the actual substrate is nice and firm. Now this is what you're going to need when you find your project. You'll see from my original chair the upholstery there is nice and firm too. Baggy upholstery is not going to be good for this tutorial. What you're going to need is a fabric chair. Now, please do not go for anything that's got um, a pile in it. So any Draylon, heavy um, coated fabrics, it will not work as well as a fine fabric um, upholstery. I do believe that this is probably the original upholstery and at some point in its life, somebody's came, came back and re-upholstered over the top with this um, lovely um, cotton fabric. My original piece of furniture that I worked on was a, a shot silk, I, I think, which is a very fine weave, as is this. It's a tight weave. You don't want fluffy fabrics because it's not gonna work quite the same. So I'm super lucky with this um, chair because look how easy the upholstery comes out which means I have freedom to paint this without touching any of the wood. And I do want to keep the wood. You may choose to paint your wooden frame as a different colour, that's completely your choice. But let's go and take a look at the original upholstery so I can explain what happened there. So on this I wasn't lucky enough to be able to remove any upholstery so I just went with a paint finish over everything including these upholstery tacks. All I did was paint straight up to the edges and then after the paint had dried I just cleaned up with a damp cloth, removed any paint off the wood and you'll see when we apply the wax later I added lots of wax into that stud finish. And then as a final flourish, I just took some gold rub and went back over the tacks and that brought them back to their original sort of luster. So let's go back to my project and we're going to start with some paint. Um, it's all about colours, so let's take a look at the paint colours. So let's clear the decks. I need to remove uh, my chair because I don't want paint on my chair. So I'm going to pop this out of view and let's set up ready for the paint. I've got some card to place that on there. So here's my paint colours. I've got four cans of paint here today. I'm using Annie Sloan chalk paint. That's just my paint choice. There will be many other uh, chalk style paints that you can use. To prime and prep this, we're going to use one neutral colour which is Annie Sloan French Linen. So this is basically to give a base coat and the reason I'm going to do uh, French Linen is because it is quite a good colour for neutralising any of these fabric colours. 
The chair that I did originally was a red shot silk, so you can imagine it needs lots of cover to blank that out. So French linen, let's open the can of paint. I'm gonna apply some paint into all, and you're gonna use minimal paint for this. It's, it's surprising how far this will go. And I'm making a wash, but as you can see, I'm doing it Jonathan Mark Mendes painted Love Styly. I'm not measuring, but I am gonna give you measurements into, into the PDF. So if you want correct measurements, it's about, I would say 50-50 water and paint. It's like a wash. Um, and let's just put some water in. There we go. A little bit of water and I'm going to mix with a brush. Watch which brush we go for. A little chip brush. This one will do. And I'm going to mix the two together. And I usually do this by consistent. I can feel the consistency. I know that it needs more water and maybe a bit more paint because I think... There we go. So the paint should be falling off the brush really, about single cream consistency. And how do we prep the fabric? Now, we need a water spray or a mister. I've got these lovely fine misters. And all I'm gonna do is saturate the fabric. So this is basically, it's a bit like opening up the pores of your skin. You know, if you put a hot um, flannel on your face, you open up the pores and this is kind of the same thing. Uh, with the fabric so it's just a light mist and I'm waking up this fabric with water and I'm using my hand just like so everything needs to be moist ready to receive the paint so you'll be surprised how far this coat goes straight on it's really runny and it should be really runny because this first coat is basically it's dyeing the fabric. We want it to go into the pile and dye the fabric. Another reason that I'm choosing French linen is when you think about old leather, when it cracks, it comes back to a pale sort of colour underneath. So that's another reason why I would be using the French linen because if it cracks, the dyed fabric will show underneath. This I'm gonna set to one side to dry. If you can let this dry naturally, try not to use a hairdryer. If it's a warm sunny day, pop it in your garden, somewhere in the sunshine, and let it dry. Um, so I'm gonna push that to one side. We're gonna move the French linen. We're not gonna need that anymore. That's a color that we're done with. And we're gonna talk about actual color. So I've done some sample boards here. I always practice any of the color combos that I like. So this is um, basically creating a tan color and there's lots of different colors that I've put dark wax over. My original chair, I used primer red. Um, this time I'm not. I've got on fleur, which is a color that I never used the first, it was, it didn't even exist. So we're gonna uh, go with that, which is, I think it's this panel. Oh no, I'm lying. It's this panel that I'm going for. And it's all about the color choice. Now I know Many of you will not be using Annie Sloan Chop Pet, you'll be using different brands. So I thought this would be a great place to interject and talk about the other types of paint that you might use to try and recreate this look. Now, if you're not using chalk paint and you're using an acrylic based paint, you would not need to dye the fabric, wet the fabric. You would need to use a primer to seal the fabric so that your subsequent layers sit on the surface. You would not want to put an acrylic based paint through the fabric and into the substrate below. You would not want crunchy, hard foam. Now you would think that short paint would do that, but it doesn't. It kind of stays soft until the wax hits the top surface and then hardens on the outside of the project. So the foam beneath dries out and stays lovely and supple. So this is my tried and tested colour recipe. Um, it's a new recipe that I'm using and I'm gonna go with these three colours. I've got um, Arl, En Fleur and Barcelona Orange, which is a really rich orange. And I'm gonna keep these all out. And I found that the more Barcelona Orange, the better this looks. So I've got some spoons and I'm gonna go with four parts Barcelona Orange. 
uh, to one of each of these, Arles and Enfleur. And it just, the warmth of the Enfleur just brings that tan color up really nicely. So I'm just gonna mix this round. I'm using teaspoons. This is how much paint you really will need, not much at all. So one, two, three, four spoons of Vaseline Orange. This is a really old can of Arles, but I'm gonna go for one heaped spoon of Arles in there. That, this just lightens it a fraction a little bit more, like so. And one small on fleur, adds a bit more warmth to it, like so. I'm gonna mix those together, and you'll see it, it makes a beautiful tan color, which is perfect for your project. I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna paint a piece of paper and we can have a look at it against the white. And also, we'll know, I'll know if I want to add any more of the other tones. But equally, this is the piece of paper that I'm gonna photograph for you and you can then see in the resource section uh, an overall view of this color. So, yeah, that feels good to me already. So again, the color will change dramatically once there's been dark wax on this. You can see it's slightly, this one's slightly more ready. I think that's the one with the original one with um, primer red. Here we go, that's the one that we're going for. You can see it's quite a tan color, so it's quite orangey, um, but with the dark wax, it changes completely. Okay, with the magic of telly, this is now dried. We left it outside for about an hour in the sunshine. It's lovely and sunny here today, so it's nice and dry, and you can hear it, it's kind of a bit crispy. And let's go back to the color mix. We have four parts Barcelona orange, uh, so one part all and one part uh, on fleur. You could use a little bit more all if you want a paler shade. Um, so again, we've got to now, we can't use this thick paint straight over the seat cover. We've got to now water it down slightly, a little bit less than we did the first time. So we're gonna go around about 70, 30, so 30% 30 water. But again, I'm not measuring anything. I'm just gonna go for it. So in goes some water. It's a guesstimation for me. And carefully, there's a full bowl, so I'm gonna mix this very carefully until it's all incorporated. It's a bit like making some batter slowly, slowly does it and incorporate the paint into the water. What you'll find is that the paint kind of sinks to the bottom. So you do have to make sure that this is well incorporated. So as you can see, I've got a really soupy mix, which is just about right. Remember, what I used for these colors is four parts Barcelona orange to one part Arl and one part on fleur. You could use more Arl in this color mix. And this is the end results with the water, very runny. And all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just slightly moisten again, not much, only a little. I'm gonna take another brush, uh, another chip brush, straight back over the, the top of this. And you can see it's really, can you see how soupy it is and it's runny? The trick is with this is fine layers, not heavy, thick layers, because if you use heavy, thick layers, you're gonna get crunchy and it's gonna break up. So f fine layers and build them up. It's all about layer after layer after layer. And we're gonna build up the thickness of the paint each time. Also, my fabric has got a slight chevron in the texture of the fabric. It's also really nice to go across the grain of that fabric because then you're filling those little holes in the fabric. So that's the first layer of our tan mix. Again, once again, we have to, it's a long process, we have to let this dry. So if you can pop it outside in the sunshine, um, you'll be surprised. It probably dry quite quick. Once the first layer is dried, it tends to dry quite quick on the other layers. Don't worry too much about leaving brush strokes in at this moment, it's fine. There we go, we're gonna pop this to one side out in the sunshine and we'll be back in a short while. So you will have found the second coat will have dried much quicker. 
So you can go about this on your third layer. So after the second layer, we're gonna use a small, fine uh, sanding pad to remove any stray hairs or any buildup of paint. So all we're gonna do is just run over it. And this is the finest sanding pad I could find. And it just removes any lumps or bumps. You don't have to go sand it right back to the fabric. Simple as that. And then this should be ready to receive the third coat. And the paint, I would normally, um, over time, the paint thickens up. So um, it's on its way back to thickening up because we've gone over a period of time. So we're just gonna go back with the same mix over the top. Same thing again, really. And we're gonna allow it to dry in the sunshine. So if you've got brush strokes um, in it from the first layer, try and go the opposite way with your paint to those brush strokes and it will fill those gaps. The idea is to get a really smooth finish. So whilst I'm waiting for this layer to dry, I'm gonna grab myself another cup of tea and I'm gonna go see my friend. He's meowing at the door. You may have caught him earlier on. And I'm gonna give him his drink of milk. Thomas is a, a cat that comes and visits me every day in the workshop. I don't know who he belongs to, but he's really friendly. So we've got to the third and final layer of my um, tan mix. Um, and as you can see, maybe on here, maybe on camera on close up, you can see there's a few little brush marks here. And this is a prime example of why I'm sanding in between these coats. It just removes any of those lumpy bumpy bits. And all I'm gonna do is one more coat and then it should be ready for either a little bit of uh, stencil design work if you choose to do that, um, or straight for your wax. So I'm gonna do my final coat. We're gonna leave it to dry. I'll pop this on. Um, and what I really wanted to talk to you about is you may, if you've already done one of my tutorials, you may realize that I'm at a different location. So this is my new workshop. It's a grade two listed building in the heart of Lincolnshire. And I'm so pleased to be working from here. It's got such lovely light. Um, and I do my real life workshops here as well as these online academy tutorials. So we have a dry seat pad. It's taken me probably all day to get to this point, but it's fully worth it because we have a nice, clean, soft surface to work from. Um, it's dried pretty quick in between coats, um, but at this point you should have a really smooth piece of fabric with all of those little indentations filled with paint, but very fine layers. And at this point, I'm gonna use a stencil to achieve an old gentleman's club looking uh, vintage style look. And so what I've got here is all different stencils. I've picked these up all over the, all over the place. This one is a beautiful stencil that I was given in Australia by uh, Barleycorn Vintage. Um, the lovely Denise, a Yorkshire lady, gave me this. And I could go straight on with that and it would be great. Um, I've got other Barleycorn Vintage stencils. Um, I've got some French style stencils. You could go with the French look, but I want it to be very English and gentlemanly. Um, I've got large industrial looking stencils, so we could use something like that. On my original project, because I had a, a back piece and a, a, a seat pad, I kind of took the stencil off kilt. And that kind of works. Also with these little, little letter stencils, so I've got little letter stencils that I could probably go across in an angle, so I would lay the stencils out in a, in a lettered pattern going across, 
and maybe a, a figure to one side, but I've decided to go with my very own custom made stencil. So you could do this. I've just found an image on Pinterest and hand drew it and then cut out my stencil. So I'm gonna go with this number. And because I've not got a large surface area, I'm just gonna go with the number bang in the middle, which is unlike me. I normally like to have things off on the side, but I just thought this sort of vintage um, 47 stencil would work very well in the middle of the piece. So let's get stuck in. All I'm going to do with this stencil, as you can see, this is, you can maybe see in close up, this is my hand drawn stencil. And I've done it on a, a slightly, it's not quite cardboard, but it's kind of flexible because the cushion's rounded. So we need to have a little bit of flex in it. And the thing is about a handmade stencil, it's kind of a one time thing only. You've got to be very careful. And I've decided to use some masking tape to keep it in place. But what I am going to do is I'm just going to use my t-shirt to remove a little bit of the stickiness because I don't want it to damage my paintwork. So once in place, I'm gonna, it's just so this does not shift. Um, and it's quite flimsy, my stencil. So when I get to these areas, I'm gonna have to be really super careful. But if we get a little bit of bleed, nah, I'm not gonna worry about it. It's meant to look vintage. It's gonna have, I want it to look like it has been stenciled. So if we get a little bit of that, that's fair enough. And there we go. Just, it's just merely just to hold that into place. And as I stencil around, I'm gonna keep my fingers close to the edges so we get a nice crisp finish. So I'm gonna use a little bit of black, some Annie Sloan graphite, and I've got a small tin, and all I'm gonna do is dip the paint into, the brush into the paint, and I'm gonna offload, and I'm gonna do a stipple motion with this because I know that pouncing will make sure that it, it basically doesn't give me any bleed. And I'm not worrying, I'm just gonna take my time into the finer details and stipple it down like so. It's a bit of a process. These, these long areas are gonna be the, the most difficult. So hold where you can, hold down. It's gonna be, don't worry about your fingers. If you're gonna get your fingers covered in paint, that's fine. But take your time over this. Of course, there's many other products out there that you could use stencil-wise. You could maybe even try some of the IOD um, rubber stamps, they might work out quite well for design. Any way that you can do this. So the trick is always do the edges first, holding down with your fingers, close to the area that you're working, and then fill in the centers. Like so, we can go and fill in that area, offload, and we should have a nice crisp stencil. Any bits we've missed, but I'm not gonna worry about that because we're gonna have lots of dark wax on there. So we're gonna do a little bit of a reveal. We'll remove these, gently does it. Don't wanna pull all of your paintwork off. Like so, we'll do the back one. I might get another use out of my hand cut stencil. Like so, and see how crisp we got this. There we go, I'm happy with that. Just leave it to dry, and then we'll get on with the waxing. So the stenciling really should not take long to dry, but make sure it's good and proper dry anyway. And we're gonna bring back my trusty bit of cardboard for doing the waxing. Um, I'm gonna place that in the center of there. And really all we need now is a clear wax and a dark wax. Now, there's still so a softness to this. It shouldn't be all crunchy and hard. It should, should still be a bit of flex. But what you will find is you will find with the clear and dark wax, it becomes more supple and more leather-like. So we're gonna apply the first coat of clear wax. I've got my trusty wax brush and we're gonna give it one light coat all over the surface and then buff it off and apply 
the dark coats, which really will make it look like vintage leather. So just simply pushing the wax in. It shouldn't need too much wax to be pushed in, to be fair, because you will have worked most of the grain out of the fabric with those three layers of paint, or four layers if you count the French linen. You may need more if you've got a different type of fab fabric, but you'll work that out as you go through the process yourself. What you find is the colours with the wax get a little bit sharper. I will make sure I get all of the sides. And already I can feel it feels more leather-like straight away. It's amazing what the wax does to the paint. Remember, this look, don't go and paint your granny's antique sofa. It really is a cosmetic look, but it does withstand an awful lot. My chair has been going really well, but it really should be all about the finished look. You can sit on it, it'll be very happily sat on it, but anything sharp might dig in and just be careful of that. But if it does, apply more dark wax, the, the, the better it looks. As far as I'm concerned, the better the finish will be over time. There we go. All I'm gonna do is make sure that there's no excess wax sat on the surface but be careful if you ladies if you've got long nails you don't want to be digging in at this point because the paint and the wax it is still a little bit unstable until it's had chance to cure so try and keep your nails away from anywhere where you might scrape into your into your paintwork treat it like you would furniture when you've painted furniture it's exactly the same thing but the wax really does help the flexibility come back to the upholstery. So as you can see, I'm almost like burnishing it. I want to push the clear wax deep into the fabric as well before it receives its dark wax. So as you keep on rubbing this wax into the paintwork, what you'll find is I don't know if you can see that quite on the camera, but it softens, absolutely softens the, the texture. It almost feels like a real leather. So hopefully you'll see that on the camera, how it's softened. It's not cracking at all. It's got a real lovely soft feel to it. So it's still gonna be very comfortable to sit on. So onwards to the dark wax. Now the dark wax, I'm gonna use the same brush and what I'm gonna do, loose hairs there, I'm gonna literally apply the dark wax. I'm gonna get a healthy amount of wax here, all over my brush, and just literally, very heavily, everything needs to be covered. Don't worry about being messy. All over the whole piece, just to start. Try not to miss anywhere. Now, it depends on how heavy or light you want to do this. You could do one coat, leave it a day and add, add some more if you fancy a little bit more. Um, I'm gonna work it and you'll see how I choose once I've worked this in. Instantly, old leather. I'm gonna take some off to allow it to be. I'm just using my cloth as a tool and I'm going to leave certain areas where darker on the corners. I'm going to take the central area where it might have faded and leave it sort of, there's a stray hair, we can move that. But what I really like to do, I think that's good for the centre part, I'm going to dip back into my wax and all I did with mine was stipple towards the edges. Now this is good, if you've got those studded areas, you can push the wax deep into those studded areas and it will hide that paint connection. So it's a little bit of a stubbling, stippling with, with your wax brush or a chip brush, any old brush will do this. Natural bristles is really good. I'm gonna lift up so I can get along that bottom edge. And it 
just adds a bit of a darkness. So leather is kind of shaded and we're using the dark wax to shade. And I might come a little bit up here. And what you'll do is let this harden and then give it a, a, another buff and a polish later. So you need some of this wax to harden a little bit. But play around with your wax. It's, treat it like a paint almost. Lift up these sides. Think sort of cloud-like. If there's something you don't like, lightly soften it away. And it just adds that real old leather pattern up. Think about the areas where it might have got more murky, where it wouldn't have been cleaned. These are where the legs, the back part of the legs would be, or the back piece would have sat. So dirt is gonna get trapped more there than it would be in this, the center areas. So around the edges, kind of leave a freedom in the middle. And move your brush around when you're stippling as well. And try and leave some heavier parts. And you'll see, it's a bit like the rust. If anyone's done my rust tutorial, it's one of those things over time, you keep on working it, and all of a sudden, your eyes go from seeing paint and seeing, in that case, rust, but in this case, old leather. So work it away. This is the fun part. You've spent all day getting the paint on. This is the creative part. The wax really will, and you can keep on reply, uh, reapplying wax. So as this, if you do get a little mark in it or a scratch in it, you can literally add a bit more wax to that mark and it will it'll even look more like old cracked leather. So this is where I'm gonna probably stop right here and we'll pop it back on its chair base and I can take a good look and I can stand back as usual and see what I feel think it might need more or less. Let's marry the two back together. Um, let's put it back into its Victorian. That's it. It's a bit tight and I'm going to go for a little bit more wax in its position. This gives you a chance to be able to look at what you've done. I'm happy with that. A bit more on the corners. And also what you can do is you can freshen up the original piece with some more dark wax. So if you're keeping in the wood, the wax will really freshen up the original. If you've got any scrapes or little bits missing, like so. Now, all you will have to do is leave this for at least 72 hours. And then you can use your cloth, once again, buff it up, and be very careful over the next month. You need this to set good and proper. I wouldn't be sitting on it in the first couple of weeks at least. Keep it as a decorative item and enjoy your leather look chair.